we are talking everything you need to know about ServiceNow careers today. This is one of the highest paying career paths you can possibly take in the tech space. Now, some people say, don't get into tech for the money. That's not something I say. I say, if you are in it for the money, you need to be considering ServiceNow careers. So who am I? My name is Chris Schwenk. I am the tech jobber. I host the Tech Jobber podcast where I interview leaders in the tech space in the Miami area and remote. Also, I have 18 years in the tech recruitment space. So all I do is get people jobs and help them level up their tech careers. Okay, so you're probably asking, what exactly is ServiceNow? Well, it's basically a cloud platform and it takes all the internal process management for a company and it streamlines it into one thing. So it's basically the IT help desk, the HR requests, the facilities, the payroll, everything is streamlined into one technology. Now, the thing is you can't just take it out of the box and put it into a company. It takes implementation because every company operates totally differently and you have to get them all talking to each other correctly. So that's where some of these careers in ServiceNow come in. There's development, there's analysts, and there are, of course, integration implementation specialists. Those people make the most money. All right, let's talk about some market stats. So 80% of the Fortune 500 companies that you know about use ServiceNow. There's 7,000 enterprise customers and 7 billion in annual revenue. So this career opportunity provides a massive supply and demand imbalance. All these companies need people who know ServiceNow here and the people that actually know ServiceNow are down here. So that's why they can charge pretty much some of the highest rates when it comes to technical skill sets. Okay, let's talk about the different roles you can get in the ServiceNow space. There's the developer roles, they're developing custom apps and uh, kind of working on the development on different modules in ServiceNow. You have the admin roles, that's more configuration, not too much coding as far as that goes. You have the architects, obviously they're paid a lot. Those are some kind of large scale implementations that they are working at at a high level. And then you have the integration specialists. Those are the people that, those are the heavy hitters you bring in basically to come in and help implement these into these large organizations. Those people make a ton of money and actually have a client that has gone nine months without filling an integration specialist in ServiceNow. Uh, that's how rare these roles are, where a big company can look for nine months and not find the right person. You also have business analyst positions here for anyone that's a BA, if you can get some ServiceNow experience, great way to level up your pay, basically bridging the business and technical aspects of the integration into one. And then you have technical consultants. Those are kind of partner implementation specialists and they're working kind of in different ways to um, help with the implementation of ServiceNow. Okay, so let's get to the money conversation. So right out of the box, people are making 70 to 95K as entry-level admins with no experience. When it comes to junior developers, you can probably make between 100 to 110 at a very junior level. Once you get to more senior levels, now your pay skyrockets. Now you're up to probably 180K at the top end. And architects, they're over 250K. So it's really tough to beat these rates. When it comes to consulting rates, these are where people are really cashing in. They're also going company to company and kind of charging these high rates for the services. If you're an experienced consultant, you're over 120 per hour. That's you know over $4,000 a week that uh, you are making and you are also done at five o'clock. So tough to beat that. At an architect integration level, this is where it goes up even more. You could be remote making 200 an hour. So if it's $8,000 a week and you're done at five o'clock every day. So uh, that's pretty tough to beat. Now, one way to make even more money on top of that is to get certified. So when you talk about certification bonus, you can look at an extra 15 to 25% salary boost if you are certified in these technologies. Okay, now I know some people are hesitant to get into the contract and consultant space because you're afraid of gaps in employment, but a lot of these implementations are like six to 18 month projects where you're making that high hourly rate for an extended period of time and uh, you go through until the project is completed. Sometimes they'll even keep you on after that for maintenance if you don't have a project come up in between. So you make that type of money for an 18 month run, you can take some time off or you can jump right to the next implementation, which I mean, again, you have 80% of Fortune 500s 
that are using this technology. There's a lot of upgrades and implementations that are going on. You're probably not gonna be without a job. So even if you look on Indeed, LinkedIn, something like that, you can look at all these ServiceNow openings that companies are trying to fill right now. Yeah, you know, when it comes to getting your start, uh, there's only really a couple ways. You could obviously get the training, get the certification. You could work directly with ServiceNow, kind of get your training that way. They could place you with a company. You could go to an integrator that all they do is kind of help with these implementations and you could try to get a job there and they will place you with one of their end clients or you could go the internal kind of company transition route where kind of you start talking to your boss about taking on more. You hear about them doing some service now work or maybe they're doing an implementation soon and you just try to get involved in it. So really only a couple of ways to get started, but they are pretty straightforward and honestly pretty easy to get started. Okay, so who should consider these type of careers? Well, if you kind of have a business process mindset and with a little technical aptitude, this could be probably a pretty good career for you. Obviously also, if you wanna make a ton of money, uh, this is probably one of the most direct and straightforward ways to do that. So, you know, also like if you're looking to kind of niche down in your career, um, like I said, if you're a business analyst and then you become a service now business analyst, you go from making, I don't know, maybe 65, 75 an hour to easily over 100 an hour that I've seen, sometimes even more, uh, depending on how desperate the company is to bring service now in and get some experts in. So yeah, I mean, if you, if you like money, then this definitely could be for you. Also people that are problem solvers, um, you, you also have to be good. I know it's, you know, there is a supply and demand issue, but you, you do have to be good to make these um, high hourly rates and salaries. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Yeah, who shouldn't consider these careers? Well, honestly, if you need variety, this is not gonna be the career path for you because you're gonna do kind of the same thing over and over at each company. Now, again, the companies do vary as far as their internal workings. So there will be some differences, but as far as working with ServiceNow, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. It's gonna be you know pretty mundane, but you are gonna make that big time money. So it kind of just depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking to be creative, also probably not for you. It's really for those people looking to take their current comp and level it up or to get a start on a career path that Obviously, it doesn't look like this technology is going away anytime soon. So you can um, kind of have longevity and you have definitely career stability as well. So something to think about. Yeah, as far as career growth, kind of really two basic paths. You get that low-level analyst job, you go to a senior analyst, then you become a lead, and then eventually a ServiceNow architect, which you're making a ton of money. Or you could go more of the consultant practice where you become... An analyst, same way, go to senior, then you become a principal and then eventually a practice lead or maybe the integration lead. So yeah, once again, just at the top level, that integration lead, it's 200 an hour. So it's very rare to get an hourly rate that high in tech, but um, you know, this is definitely one of them and it is uh, definitely a career that needs more people that are good and uh, have legitimate backgrounds in this space. So definitely do not sleep on service now. Yeah, and once again, what sets these careers apart are that top level. That top level, as far as an individual contributor, there are a couple instances that I've seen of careers that pay more than this, but the architect level 300K, even more depending on the role. And when it comes to consultants, you're looking at up to 250 an hour for that integration kind of superstar for a big company that needs really a lot of help with service now. Kind of unheard of. There are other roles that pay this much, but there aren't many. So as far as long-term earnings, at the end of the day, you're gonna be making more than you know a lot of executives even in the tech space. And you're just an individual contributor. Uh, you just have this specific knowledge of the technology of service. You know, looking forward, apparently there is a major focus on international expansion for service now, and they're looking to really double and triple down in the healthcare space. Um, it's a space that they are not huge in yet, but I have interviewed some people that are talking about bringing it into healthcare systems, kind of major organizations around the country, and service now is gonna be at the front of that. And they need, obviously at that level, they need something that is very effective at you need the patients and the billing to all communicate and all those internal systems for 
healthcare, hospital system, they need to be operating perfectly. That's where ServiceNow will come. Okay, so in closing, what do we have? We have a very high paying, very stable, growing platform that uh, is an amazing career for people. And uh, you'll be making a ton of money. You can even open up your own practice uh, within ServiceNow, kind of uh, use your experience to do that as well. So really there are uh, a number of options and good thing for you is they're all very high paying. So definitely something to think about if you are deciding which area of tech to go into. This is really one of the best in 2025 that I've seen. So if you have any more questions, you can check out my interview with Shannon Chapman. Obviously she hires these technical people in the ServiceNow space. And also Horace Mackey, he is more on the tech sales side, but he works directly for ServiceNow. He made over a million dollars in his career and tech sales for ServiceNow. That's another route. Uh, obviously I focus more on the technical roles, but if you're looking for a tech sales job, you wanna work directly with them, it sounds pretty good to me. So. In closing, check out my interview with those two. Also, if you are looking for a tech job and you want me to do all the outreach for you, that's what I do with my Tech Career Accelerator. We kind of reach out to hiring managers and HR at your ideal title and companies and uh, try to get you to the top of the pile when it comes to resumes because we know what it feels like to have your resume just sit in that pile of a thousand resumes and you're never gonna get called. So we take that for you make sure that uh, you are being considered for every open job in your space. So if you have any interest in that, you can click the link below. Thanks again. Check you guys next time.